This is the Meat Eater Podcast coming at you shirtless, severely bug bitten, and in my case, underwearless. We hunt the Meat Eater Podcast. You can't predict anything. The Meat Eater Podcast is brought to you by First Light. Whether you're checking trail cams, hanging deer stands, or scouting for elk, First Light has performance apparel to support every hunter in every environment. Check it out at firstlight.com. F I R S T L I T E.com. Joined today by a man who in, one second, seven months will become a Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame inductee. Woo! Uh, hold on. Thank you, boys. Hey. Linebacker Clay Matthews. There it is. No <laughs> 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 He's got, he got a Vikings uh, uh, female sweater on. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is female because it is my uh, it's my fiance. So okay, all right. Well, he's yeah, trying to shake your confidence, man. Yeah. And there's a joke Chester made that I only just now got. Yep. Can I explain it? Yeah, you can explain it. This morning, when Clay and I were driving down the road, Clay Matthews and I were driving down the road, and Clay Matthews is talking about moving to play with the Packers. And he commented that how much people in Wisconsin like their deer hunting. And he said they would come to the games dressed in hunter's orange. <laughs> That's your joke, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Kryn said wear jerseys and I didn't have a jersey so I put on some blaze of orange because that's pretty much the team colors during a home game when it's cold. <laughs> that's, that's, cool. that's when you know it's deer know season. It's, yeah. it's late November. When gun season opens, there's camo and blaze orange. Yeah. And you can see that all around Lambeau Pack, Field. Dude, those games are. <laughs> so this is my crazy. sporting jersey. <laughs> I don't it has get to it. do with wrestling. What's one I have? It's <laughs> wrestling the octopus. I'd like everybody to know that Steve is holding his shirt out in the exact <laughs> fashion a small child would. <laughs> that would say, ask me about this. <laughs> That's it's the an octopus wheel. So I got a gaff into a huge octopus. Oh, I need to share this with you. In case you're one up in this situation. I got a gaff into a huge octopus and he fought me off and got away with the gaff. And then later we were laughing about now that octopus is running around down there with a gaff. <laughs> so why why would I be in this position in the future? I'm, or have I as the story oh, not finished? If you ever get out, so the, here's when you lose a fight with an octopus. Here's what happens: <laughs> <laughs> he gets stuck to the hole of the boat, and there's no amount of nothing is going to get him off the hole of that boat. Okay. Okay. But when you give up the fight, he just <laughs> drops away. So I got this gaff in his arm. He's huge. I have pictures of it. I got a gaff into his arm, and we can't drag him on the boat. My wife and her friend are not being kind of helpful. <laughs> and I eventually, he, he keeps moving down the hole of the boat, and I can't hold on. It's either I'm going to get dragged into the ocean, or I'm going to have to let go. And I let go. I told this story in a podcast, and the guy wrote in with the most genius idea in the world. When you get one stuck to your boat like that, and you can't get it in the boat, just reach over there and put a hook into it on a rod. Yeah. Mm. Oh, get a hook into the meaty part of his arm mm -hmm. and then be like, okay, you win. I give up. <laughs> Open the bail. Yeah. He's going to, then you get a second chance. Uh, I fight him back up to the boat and fight him again. Dude, sounds didn't like a mess, man. Grab your second That's, gaff. That's great. No, that is a great tip. <laughs> I didn't see you writing any of this down. <laughs> I, I will, I will. I will keep that in mind next time I'm <laughs> gaffing octopus. Yep, gaffing. Gaffing, I'm sorry. Yep. If you ever I haven't done it before. Can I see your Super Bowl ring? Yeah, of course. What, what year is this now? This is from 2010. We uh, Damn. Yeah. And that's nothing now. Nowadays, because every team that wins the Super Bowl, it's a... I think it's massive. It's how, how can massive. they make it bigger than the year prior? So the last couple of years, teams have been making so that top part can actually, and this one doesn't, but you can actually take the top off and inside they'll have like a replica of the stadium and whatnot. So that's, you know, from Super Bowl 40, 2010. So, I mean, it, it, it's an older, I would consider an older Super Bowl ring. You compare it to the other ones, I mean, they might as well be wearing on two knuckles now. It's, they're that big. Do you get any sacks on this game? 
I didn't. Can you ever get these just done in brass knuckles? Five, uh, four rings all together? Uh, Tom Brady could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tom Brady could. <laughs> Not many others, though. That's impressive, man. Yeah. You better pass that thing around. So do you wear it out and about now and then? No. I've never worn it out. I, feel, I think you I think feel it, like a blowhard or what? Yeah, yeah. And then every, very every year there's a there's there's a new there's a new winner every year. So you can't and I feel like it, it's a great thing to wear when you go back to, you know, if I if I go back to Green Bay for whatever it may be. For, you know, for instance, next year the the Hall of Fame, the Packers Hall of Fame. I perhaps I'll wear that, but otherwise like you're wearing your Super Bowl ring out. That says a lot about it's you. It's kind of like yeah. wearing a hat <laughs> with more personality than you have, yeah, right? Yeah. I I used to bartend in Missoula. And there was an old timer who played for the Raiders and had a Super Bowl under his belt. And he wore his, his Super Bowl ring. Uh, but at that time, uh, you know, I imagine uh, that was more of a common thing because it looked way more of a ring than uh, this. Uh, well, I'm not saying I wouldn't does, wear it for right. free drinks. I'm assuming that's why <laughs> yeah. he was at the with you. But. Uh, you, you might not be old enough to get this reference, but when I put it on, I feel like Liberace. Mm. I, I know Liberace. There's a lot of sparkle in that. A lot of yeah. sparkle. You ever hear players getting a little hard up and selling their rings? Yeah, I've heard what, of it what, before. What do they get for them when they do that? Uh, it depends on the player. Oh, uh, I, guess I mean, there's would, there's been some who will put their, I, I don't know about rings, and I'm sure it's happened, but bigger name guys who will take it to auction, and they'll bring in lots of money. Especially. So if Tom Brady sold his whole ring collection, that's going to be millions of dollars. Yeah. Because yeah. it's. Because I mean, it would... I don't know what that would go for. If he sold one, <laughs> if he, if he sold one ring, I'm, I'm sure that would be at least seven figures. Uh, it's a heck of a weight. Oh, yeah. It's really heavy. That's wild. Okay, hang tight, Clay. Okay. We're going to cover off on some stuff. All right. First, I have the opposite of a correction. What would you call it, Phil? What would you, you know when we do corrections where you're wrong? What yeah. would you call it if you were right? So someone's writing, <laughs> so you're right, or the person writing it. I is said something, I uh -huh. got shot down, and then it turns out I'm right. Uh, I think that's a, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're just proving your point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to prove my point on something. Yeah. The other day, uh, there was a biologist named Carmen Van Bianchi sitting right where you're sitting right now, and I was telling her about the late comedian Jerry Clower, who he would tell, uh, as he said, he doesn't tell funny stories, he tells stories funny. I was talking about how Clower is such a uh, fan of in great detail in his hunting stories. And I was saying that a, 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 miss, a mess up that Clower had is he's telling a story about a guy that used to, he didn't believe in shooting raccoons out of a tree. He'd like to climb the tree, knock the raccoon out with a stick, and then let the dog, let the raccoon fight it out with the dogs. Because he felt you had to give a raccoon a fighting chance. And if that raccoon wanted to lick all those dogs and walk off, it was up to him but he didn't want to shoot it. And, I, and, and Clower has a story about this guy, John Newbanks, climbing into a tree and getting into a fight with a, it's not a raccoon. He punches it with a stick, but it winds up being, as Clower said, a lynx. And Clower says, it was a lynx. We called them souped up wildcats. Now, Carmen Van Bianchi that was in your seat is a lynx researcher. Then someone said, well, I don't think Clower messed up. I think that there's so much conf name confusion because the Bobcat's Linnaean name is Lynx Rufus, right? Mm -hmm. So they're like, I think that people used to use Lynx and Bobcat interchangeably or in some areas they would call a Bobcat a Lynx. But, and I listened to that story to check what I was talking about. Clower just prior to that uses Bobcat. Yeah, I, I noticed that too. He says, Steve, when Steve old Brummy cuts when out, to this. you don't have to worry. He says, he's talking about his dog, Brummy. He said, when old Brummy cuts out, you don't have to worry about no possum or no bobcat. Yeah. Then when John Newbanks gets into the tree, he says, it was a lynx. Mm. Which don't range into Mississippi. Now and then, Cal will get frustrated if we talk about something that does not matter. Can you imagine him right now? <laughs> was that the face he was just giving you it, like this? It's like you're inside my brain. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what am I doing? Well, I'm here. I want everyone here to note, note the patience that I was having. I was really thinking that it was going to come back to our podcast guest. Let, like, him, surely, let surely him mix it up gonna... somehow. <laughs> surely this is going to come home and hit home in some way that's near and dear to me, Cal. was thinking. <laughs> We're going to uh, 
So Chester's here. Hello. Max Barda's here. I've asked you, I can't remember the answer. You no relation to Tread Barda. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. You do? Yeah, he's mm. my uncle. Oh. No. I knew I asked no. you. No, he's, I'm oh, he's not. I, I tell everyone that, but no. That's no one Tread of Max's Barda. Same spelling, jokes. though. I yeah, same spelling. Yeah. yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? Wasn't his slogan? I don't do things the hard way. I, I do, do things the bard way. Yeah, you could just. Do you ever just steal that? that? Throw I it out? Tattoo. No, I get a tattoo. No, I said that's a tattoo right there. Oh, I do Perhaps things that, the bard way. Seth Morris is here. <laughs> Howdy, <laughs> Doctor Randall, and uh, Callahan Crins off where she sits, where no one can hear. Um. <laughs> Dr. Randall, uh, we're, we're, we're excited. We are. About the Long Hunter uh, audio originals performing nicely. People are enjoying it. We're very excited. It's got some negative reviews. <laughs> Just only a couple. The, fir- the top review, Clay opens up the reviews. So me and Clay narrate it. Worked on it with Randall. Clay opens up the reviews in the first review. I don't like that Clay Newcomb guy. (laughs) 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 It just deflates you, man. It's so bad. Yeah, I feel like... You just want to call Apple and be like, can you just move that, like, to another area? A lot of people say they like Clay's voice, you know? that There's always going to be some negative thing. Can't please everybody. Yeah. The people who say uh, positive things, typically, uh, that takes more energy to write in about something positive than to... Complain. Yeah, when you like something, you, know? you just sort of quietly like it. <laughs> it's you don't a, feel the need to tell anybody. It's about way it. more fun to <laughs> criticize things. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Tommy Edson, the blue collar scholar, he might have a criticism. He might have wrote it. Mm. I get a text from him. Why are there two narrators? I said it's a long story. That's it. Just just that. That's it. He didn't say, "Hey, it's pretty good." Nope. Got a question for you? <laughs> nope. Nope. Jeez, Tommy. Yeah. He didn't compliment sandwich that. No. Oh, Crin, did you see the article about how co- you shouldn't give compliment sandwiches? Yeah. Right. You sh- did you share that with me? I think I might have been the one. The yeah. compliment sandwich, which we've covered on the show, is like you say, do I need to do it again? I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I think people get it. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> to offer criticism. The new way to offer criticism is to say, um, I have a hell of a lot of respect for you. You could do better. Wow. That seems like your dad's like yelling at you about mm-hmm. something. We're going to do this, the, the second installment of, oh no, first we're going to do this. We have a kid's podcast coming out. We're going to do a bunch and see how they do. We're, we're going to do five. We're going to do five kids podcasts. Four or five kids podcasts. Five, right? Why, why, did, it, why did it change since a minute ago when I talked to you? Let's go with five. It's a real peek behind the curtains going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're going to try it out. I don't, I, I don't really know. People discourage you from, from kids' content. There's an ongoing email chain as we speak trying to yeah. get down to the bottom of this. So just so people know when they see it, here, here's the thing that's going to happen. If you listen to this, and, and I never tell people that this is, there's kids that listen, but I never tell people this is a kid's show because you'll, you'll find out in a minute. One of the reasons it's not a kid's show, when we get to talking about uh, a, a broken reproductive organ on a wild hog. But, <laughs> but in all fairness, I would talk about that with my kids because we're pretty open with them about stuff. Um, here's the trouble with the kids. Eh, it's not trouble with the kids podcast. It's just hard. We're going to see if people like it. I think that we, I know we have a ton of young parents out there that listen and we did a kid's book and our, and our kid's book was, became a number one New York times bestseller, which inspired us to do a kid's podcast. The kid's podcast is going to run like this. And, and you're going to see it in your feed because we're not going to build, I don't think we're going to build its own feed. We're going to see how people like it and how they respond to it. So if you're listening and you start seeing this kid's podcast pop up in your feed and you, you're not a kid and you don't have kids, just ignore it. Go on to the next thing. It's the kid's show. The kid's show is very short. It has three components to it. There's, I, w- I come on and do a his little mini history lesson. Okay. Um, we're going to do a, a, a kid and I have kids. So I've, I've had kids for 13 years. I'm, I don't want to toot my own horn in 13 years. I've established my credentials as someone who explains things to kids a lot. So I kind of get how to explain things to kids because I'm just doing it all the time. I talk about in the first one, why teddy bears are called teddy bears. Okay. Which is a bear hunting story. And then we're going to do one about animals that are crepuscular, not nocturnal, not diurnal, but crepuscular. 
stuff like that. Then we do a thing that kids are going to love where it's animal noises and it's like a clue game as you build up to guess what animals making that noise. And we, we have some phenomenal wildlife noises and you'll hear it and you'll be like, that ain't no animal. Um, but it is. And so it's a guessing game. And then there's kids trivia where we have a bunch of kids come into the studio and it's a three question trivia show. And instead of them competing against one another, which is what they would like to do, they work as a group to raise money for conservation. So, you know, like the only game show where conservation always wins, meat eater trivia. This is the only kids show where conservation always wins. And the other day, the only kids show where belching always wins. Um, no. How did that go, Phil? That was a good joke. Well, uh, we don't want to spoil it, but there's some burping involved. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so get pumped, mm, kids. The kids <laughs> at the table earn money for every right question they get and it can be accumulative so if you ask 10 kids a question and all 10 kids get the question right they would earn 50 bucks 100 bucks something like that and it goes on and so they're contributing by getting the answers right and wrong they're contributing to a pool of money collectively that then goes to support conservation organs organizations we don't let the kids pick i guess spencer picks for them yeah spencer hosts that and it's a panel of kids so if you got kids, you might like this. And if it works well, we'll keep doing it. If if not, and I'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted. If it's not resonating and people don't like it, we're not going to do it. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a heavy lift. It's like hard to find advertisers for a kid's podcast. I'm just being really upfront. I was wondering why there was all kinds of havoc going on the other day. Oh, yeah. Just running around and... Next thing I know, they're in my office eating a bunch of candy. and You know the worst <laughs> thing about having the kids' podcast? My kids participate, and I'm always bringing junk from home and putting it on the free table. <laughs> and the minute my kids come through that door, they go to that free table, find stuff, and then bring it back to my house. <laughs> I gave them some stuff. No, they come, they, they like, they don't stop. They know there's candy around if they look hard enough. The first thing they're going to do is go to that free table, fill a bag up with a bunch of hats, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and then go back home with all that stuff. And fight about it like it was never laying around. I'm like, the reason it's on the free table is because it was here and no one wanted it. I think you're kind of underselling the show, though. So I'm going to switch back oh, here. Cause, cause, get in there. Well, I, I thought just, I sold the hell out of it. Well, you did, but you're like, I don't know if it's going to happen. It's hard to do. We'll see. But I just want to say that we played it for Spencer the other day, and he thought he thought it was one of the best things we've ever done as a company. <laughs> Hold on, you played I'm, it for who? We, we played the, the, the rough cut of the pilot episode for Spencer, and he, he loved it. He was oh. over the moon about it. Yeah. Okay, it's the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm 27 years old, and I think I'm going to listen to this podcast. I, I might learn, learn a thing or two. I'm not under... I'm trying to oversell it. I'm just trying to clarify why you see a kid's show in this feed, and I'm asking people to bear with us. Don't be annoyed. Don't be like, what in the hell is this? It's just because we're doing it in, to benefit America's children. Mm -hmm. We're going to need Clay's opinion. That sounds... Too, that sounds... Kid. Noble. <laughs> yeah. Noble. Yeah. We're doing it for America's children. And then after five, if we see a, an appropriate response, it'll move and live on its own. And so you won't always have to wonder why this kid's show is on your thing. If you have parents, I think you're going to like it. We're going to jump into a second installment. Oh, can you share the pictures with Clay Matthews? Yes. We're going to jump into the second installment of our trail cam series. The last one we did cats. We focused on ditch cougars, mountain lions, bobcats. And, th and then, but there's a, well, the last time we did crazy trail cams, there's a little thing that happened where we were talking about what not to send in. And we were laughing about someone who just sends in a picture of a pig, a wild hog with his lipstick out. And, Corinne, we were laughing about Corinne has to open all these up. And so we were sort of pointing this one out as an example of something not worth sending in. Like pigs get excited. Pigs reproduce. Just because you happen to get a trail cam photo of a pig ready. Aroused. <laughs> Aroused. That doesn't need to go to Corinne. <laughs> and so we dogged on the guy. Then the guy wrote in saying, you got me all wrong. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of lipstick, and this he, one's worth. He's like, checking sure, out. this guy does have his lipstick out all the time, but he points this out: it's stuck out, and he said it's flopping around. So, 
he's always right. He's flopping all the time. Flops all over the place never goes away over time. It's not that he has it out. It's just out. My wife had a chihuahua like that. Oh, yeah. well, mm. hang tight. <laughs> so we're going to call a veterinarian here, and she's going to explain something. Can you hear this good? Put the bottom of the phone right up to the like the it, front of the microphone. Make sure your volume's Where all the way up. Where are you talking? Yeah, volume all the way up. Hello? Davina. Hey, Steve. Are you ready to talk about the pig? Let's talk about it. So I'm on the phone with Davina. We have a resident genius. We have Dr. Randall, but he's not the resident genius. We have an actual resident genius. <laughs> an actual resident genius named Hunter Spencer. And I'm on the phone with Hunter Spencer's spouse, who is a veterinarian. And I called her about this pig. And she clarified she's not a hog man. But she has some things to discuss. Davina? I have some. I do have some animal knowledge okay. that, I, that I can share. So share it with this gentleman named Jacob, who we teased, and now we owe a apology and an explanation. Put the phone to the front of your mic, Steve. Where are you talking? Okay. Oh. Are we referring to the pig, or are we referring to dogs and cats? Well, you can do what you think's going on with the pig based on what you know goes on with dogs. Okay. So in the photos that you sent, um, obviously the pig's penis is out. Um, that's called paraphimosis in dogs and cats. Um, pigs, it, is, it, it actually is a rare phenomenon, but it can, ha can happen. It's more common in dogs. Um, it can happen for a number of reasons, but the most common reason in dogs is that they get an erection. The penis comes out of the prepuce, which is the skin that houses the, the penis. The penis dries out, and then it can't go back into place. Um, sometimes you can also, especially in large, um, in um, long-haired breeds, the hair can get wrapped around the penis mm. and it prevents it from going back in. Um, so it's typically one of those scenarios. Davina, can you hold on a sec? Yep. Clay, you tracking? Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of penis talk around. Okay, yeah. we're good. Yeah. I just want to make yeah. sure our guest was following. Just lining up with anything you saw in the locker room. <laughs> you know, just, just wait. You can answer that later. But we'll get back to it. Go on, Davina. Sorry. So anyway, I would say what's happened with this pig is that he's had an erection and for some reason, the penis just hasn't went back into the sheath or the prepuce. Um, in dogs, it can cut off circulation and the penis can actually end up falling off, um, which has I have seen happen. Um, but it, in that particular photo that you sent, it doesn't look like the penis is engorged. Um, it looks like it's just more flaccid and just in the out position. So, um, yeah. Um, Can you tell folks how you fix it in dogs? This is a crazy story. Oh, what surgeries did you do on animals today? I did a dental on a dog and then um, we also did, what did we do on that dog? Um, had a pyometra spay, which was an infected uterus in a dog. Okay. Um, so, so spay and neuter your, your pets um, to prevent that. I have to plug that. Um, and then the other dog we did um, a sedation on, and we did um, trim the nails on that dog because it, it won't, won't allow them. You had that. to sedate a dog to, to trim, trim its nails? nails? Yes. Yes. Peanut butter on the Actually, wall didn't work? That happens quite often. Yeah. They, hmm. they hate their nails to be trimmed. Got it. So talk about how you fix this on a dog, because th this is a... Uh, I don't so, know. I don't know what it is. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> the most simple way to fix it, and generally um, what you do is you just wash the penis off gently using cool water. You apply some lubrication and then just pull the skin back over the penis. Um, if it is too big to fit back in, um, 
you would apply a hypertonic saline solution um, or sugar. Sugar pulls fluid out. So you can actually just pack the penis with sugar. Really? uh, (laughs) Yes. A few minutes. um, And then pull the fluid out. I feel so hypertonic. Do you have to go to the vet for this? Yeah, you can, uh, and, and the then you can push it back in. Head, Sometimes you have to open, uh, make the opening larger uh-huh. um, in order to get it back over the penis. Um, and then in cases where the penis has died, you actually have to amputate the penis and oh. make it basically visually like a girl. Um, you would just suture an opening up and the dog would pee through the opening instead of the end of the penis. Would they still lift their legs? Oh, yeah. Can squat? you ever cure them of lifting their leg? Yeah, they normally will still do that. Yeah. Just old habits. Just a behavior, mm-hmm. Yeah. Behavior response. Yeah. So hmm. if you see that five pound bag of sugar at the vet, <laughs> yeah, you know they're why. not just drinking a lot of coffee. Yep. <laughs> Davina, dude, you don't even know uh, how much I'm going to, we're going to call you on this show. What? Now that you did yeah. such a good job of this. Oh, her family's from, her family's long time bear, like Appalachian black bear hunters. Long, long hunters? Yep. Yeah. Oh, plug your vet business. Well, I work, uh, so we live in Virginia Beach. I work at Kimsville Veterinary Hospital um, in Virginia Beach. And are you looking for clients or are you just trying to have it be that you don't have to do anything down there? <laughs> uh, well, we, we always welcome clients. Um yeah, so, yeah, call us up. Until you become the regional <laughs> penis specialist. <laughs> like, that's what's yeah. going to result out of this. <laughs> so, pl- plug the, plug the business the again. Yes. <laughs> it's Kimsville Veterinary Hospital in Virginia Beach. Okay, I'm not catching the first word. I'm sorry. Kimsville, K-E-M-P-S-V-I-L-L-E. Got Kemp- it. Kempsville. Yep. Yeah. Kempsville. Ask for Davina. Yes. Okay, don't let other podcasts call you up, all right? No. What? If another podcast wants to talk about something, tell them you can't. Because you are you got an exclusive. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to you guys. You got, yeah. you got an exclusive here. Right. All right, you're like, you're like Dr. Phil used to be the Oprah for us. Um, am I thinking the right guy? Yeah. yeah he Dr. Oz. Yeah. Dr. Oz. Too. All right, thank you, Davina. You're welcome. Have a good one, guys. Bye. All right, bye. All right, so there you go. The guy we goofed on made it right. And we all learned something. Yeah. Jacob. There you go, Jacob. Sorry to dog on you, man. I didn't think you were a pervert. Glad I have a female <laughs> dog. <laughs> Corinne might. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. So this, I, I, I'm catching the theme now. Another guy wrote in, where, where do people go to see all these pictures? You want to... Post some of them on Instagram, maybe, but if they're watching this episode, oh, okay. So, yeah, if you're wondering what we're looking at, you can go on, just just go watch the show on YouTube. You'll be able to see the pictures. This one is a guy wrote in, he's got his, he's got a picture of this buck in, alive, and he's got a picture of a buck dead. The buck dead is hanging right side up, head up. And the gentleman that wrote in thought that his, that the deer's scrotum was in front. So if you imagine a deer going down the trail, his penis is leading in the way, leading the way, and his scrotum is taking up the rear. Cal, right? what'd you say? Something about Frank's in the back. Oh, that that's a something about Mary reference. <laughs> got got the beans before the Frank. No. How, how'd you make that happen? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so your Frank is first, your beans come take if you're a deer. Your Frank is leading the way and your beans are behind. Typically. Sends in a picture where there's a deer with his beans are ahead of the Frank. Corinne sends it to Heffelfinger, deer biologist. Great friend of the show. Heffelfinger says, well, there's a couple things going on. One, his, Heffelfinger says, what you're looking at, what you think are enlarged beans is a tumor. A scrow-shaped tumor. Riding ahead of the Frank, beyond the Frank, behind the Frank, and maybe related to the tumor is an atrophied scrotum. Next picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, those don't look like testicles. Looks like something else was happening there. That's what Heffelfinger thinks. 
What do you think about that picture, Clay? I think it's a hernia. And I bring that from my sports background. I, you, you hear people having, you know, herniations and they have to get that wire mesh put in. And, yep, and we, I had that, had that oh, happen. Oh, a buck hernia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you could see the what looks like the intestines might be spilling out. Mm. Maybe this veterinarian in Virginia Beach can do a wire mesh implant <laughs> <laughs> before this buck was killed. Too late for this fellow. <laughs> Seth, All right. I don't know if you'd mind me sharing personal information of yours. No, no, go for it. Seth got... Uh, Diagnosed with, I, I recently shared the experience of going down and having, did. having the boys uh, sonared. Yeah, you and I had yeah. a very, very yeah. similar experience. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they told they they read Seth's results. What do you call that when you when you're having a baby? Ultrasound. Ultrasound. Yeah. They read Seth's results. It's like live scope, but and different. they're like, "Oh, you got a hernia." <laughs> and then Seth goes down to the hernia guy. And he takes a look and tells Seth to get up and go home. He says, 90% yeah. of the people they send me down here, supposedly with a hernia, don't have a hernia. <laughs> yep. Surprised the hell out of me. What did you have? Just like a lot of gas or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I do have that. But uh, no, it was just a strained muscle. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, can we put up, Phil, do you have the, techno the technology to put up a, a photo of Max's hernia? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he sends it to me, yeah. yeah, we'll do that. The last part of the trail cam, the, the last trail cam picture we're going to get into, and you, this you got there's there's nothing extraordinary about the trail cam photo. So June third, two thousand twenty three, four twenty nine p.m. Uh, it's a mountain lion walking through what looks to be a riparian area. Um, but the story behind it is pretty crazy because. A man and woman that own this place, they're getting married on their property. And they get married on, they get married at whatever the hell, four o'clock, June 3rd, 2023. Okay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They get they get married June 3rd, 2023 at 4 p.m. In this cell cam picture is a mountain lion that was snapped at June 3rd. 2023, 429 p.m. He's got a picture of where he got married and an arrow pointing to where the trail cam is. Yeah, they at, got at 430. Okay. And unbeknownst later they just pulled the card and they're like, oh my God, a mountain lion. And they looked at the date and time, and that lion was there while they got married. Like right behind where they got married. That's cool. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. I had years ago, I was at a wedding in Taos, New Mexico. And the gal I was with, we were, I didn't know the people getting married, but she did. And the preacher commented on the hawks circling overhead. They were buzzards. Oh. You know, I turned to my date and said, I mean, hawks. <laughs> <laughs> I think the mountain lion thing would be good luck. You know how they say if it rains at your wedding, it's good luck, good juju. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know that. No, Steve, do you actually want me to well, send that to true. Phil? <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea. Okay, I just think if you want, if folks out there want to see like just an a, actual hernia, what a real, no needing to go get no <laughs> ultrasound over this hernia. Yeah. Okay, it's give me one sec. Definitely a hernia. Uh, you know, there's that Bob Dylan quote: "Don't need a weatherman to tell what way the wind blows." Right, mm -hmm. and that hernia diagnoses itself. Yeah, is he putting it up right now? Yeah, yeah, it'll be a thirty seconds here. So Clay Matthews, your first duck ever today. Mm -hmm. First, several ducks, different varieties. first, different kinds of ducks. Yeah. Stay yeah. closer to your mic, will you? Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh, you're all right. Uh, did not grow up around hunting, though. I didn't. I grew out in the outside of Los Angeles and hunting. No one hunted in my family. Because they all played football. They all played football, yeah. They were all busy during the fall, the best time of year to hunt. But, yeah, I don't know. Once I got to uh, – uh, and I wasn't even – I was always an outdoorsman. I always enjoyed the outdoors, uh, just, just messing around out there as a kid. But there's limited opportunities where I was living. And I think once I went to Wisconsin and Green Bay, that's when – you know, I started to be around, immerse myself in that culture of, you know, white-tailed deer hunting – 
um, turkey, black bear, walleye fishing, king salmon. And I think that just kind of lit the fire, so to speak. And then I, you know, had the means to, to book some of these hunts and, and travel a little bit more. And I think I just started down the path to where I'm, that's where I'm at now. Am I? Oh, there it oh, is. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like not that? to be interrupted. Oh, but. oh dude. <laughs> Look at that. That's a hernia. Yeesh. That's not a testicle. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ouch. Surgery. Yeah. Um. Anyways, <laughs> Clay, that's you. That was, that was a yeah. difficult segue. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw Clay register that picture out the corner of his eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, striking were you the kind of kid who was just good at all like good at everything good at all the sports not really I, I i was i was good when i was young um very good and then i got passed up because uh i went through puberty real late like almost like my junior and senior you year. shared that with us yeah, yeah i did yeah that's a it's hard to explain to people why i'm talking about my you know becoming a man but <laughs> you know and so i i wasn't i had played in high school best. so then all of a sudden you weren't big anymore exactly and i was getting passed up by everybody i and i had the my knees hurt my heels hurt i had shin splints i was not a very good athlete and finally my senior year i grew about three inches and put on about 40 pounds and i was i was still coming into my own you know as far as an athlete is concerned but my dad was a our defensive coordinator and opted not to start me. So, you know, that just kind of, oh, that goes wow. to show. Well, a lot, a lot of, a lot of parents. What a low blow. Yeah. Well, I mean, rightfully so. I shouldn't have been starting. So I don't hold it against him whatsoever, but it makes, it makes the story that much better. Yeah. Lay out who all, who all in your family is, is involved in professional. Sure. Like, who, who, like, well, it started with college my college sports and yeah, NFL. Yeah. It started with my grandfather, uh, Clay Matthews Sr. He, uh, went to call. He played football and was a boxer. Um, but he went to Georgia Tech and then played for the 49ers and ended up serving in the Korean War. And this was back when football, you didn't make a whole lot of money. And then two of his sons, which is uh, one is my father, so Clay Matthews Jr., he played 19 years in the NFL. Oh. Um, and his brother, so my uncle, Bruce, he played 19 years as well. It's like the family is, business. Wow. Jeez. And it's unheard of to play 19 <laughs> yeah. years, too. And he's he's in the... Um, you got to have some sore parts, man, after yeah, 19 he, years, man. My dad seems to be in great shape. My uncle's, he's you know, he's got some locked up elbows and from being in the trenches, but he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And um, however, oh gosh, how many of his kids? He's had... Uh, one is currently the starting left tackle for the Atlanta Falcons, Jake Matthews, who I've done a number of hunts with. Uh, my other cousin, Kevin, played for the Titans for four or five years. That's incredible. Another yeah. one of his brothers. So another one of my cousins was, was with the Pittsburgh Steelers for a minute. Um, and then on my side of the family, uh, obviously I you know had my career 11 years in the league. Uh, my younger brother played. He went to the University of Oregon. He played five or six years and then my older brother didn't play in the nfl but played college ball at university of southern california so i, I don't know how many that is but yeah football lost track it's yeah it's a world they're world like football what's your family. what's your last name son matthews okay <laughs> yeah. come on <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we we've been blessed to have a, a, a body that can you know with handle the rigors and punishment of the game but i also think we're I think we're a little different in the sense of the competitive nature that we have and, and how, you know, we want to be great. And I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I mentioned this before when we were talking to other athletes, but I got a friend who he he's the first baseman with the Mets, Pete Alonso. You know, you ever hear mm -hmm. Pete Alonso? Yeah. He's been on the show. And he's all right. He never knows if he's going to be able to hunt on bunch. Because if he's on it, if, the, if they don't make the playoffs – it's a killer hunting year for him. Yeah. Because he's, what, done in September? You're done, yeah. Yeah. If you make the playoffs, you're screwed. Yeah, October. So I asked him, I said, do you ever wind up sort of in the back of your head hoping <laughs> that you don't make the playoffs? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, fo football's tough because our season. Yeah, you're screwed no yeah, matter we, what. Yeah, yeah. It, if you're the worst team or the best team, we start in late July and we go all the way through, you know, the Super Bowl goes through the first or second week of february now but even if you don't make the playoffs you're finishing january first second so you could forget all those good hunting seasons there's gotta be a lot of nfl guys that like to hunt turkeys because the only thing you can do honestly there, there's there's not a lot of nfl players and i could be wrong i could be wrong but i would say generally on each team you have a handful of guys but maybe two to four people who might actually hunt there's 
<laughs> plenty of players who are who, who love to shoot guns and um, you know who might be getting into archery or whatnot. But as far as putting the time, it's really difficult, and it's not until after their career, much like myself, that they start really diving into it. So there's, just because of the time thing, exactly, just because of the time thing, it's just it's too difficult. Now you hear stories of. Brett Favre just obviously haven't played up in Green Bay. He'd show up, you know, he'd go out, who knows, four or five in the morning and come back with bloody hands before a game. Yeah, there, there's some wild <laughs> yeah. stories about Brett Favre uh, of his hunting days and, you know, just buck blood down the back of his truck bed and whatnot. But yeah, otherwise, it, it's, you know, I feel like there, there's not too many. What is the, in your mind, uh, what's the hunting and fishingist of the sports in terms of like, you know, of the pro sports, what ones are most inclined? To have? It's got to be like hockey. I, I would say hockey just because I feel like hockey is predominantly like Midwest, yeah, East It's like Coast. Northern. Yeah. Yeah. Not the Northern because there's a hell of a lot of hunters in the South. It just kind of has that feel to it. I yeah. I, I don't see many basketball players going out hunting. I just don't. It doesn't seem like that's part of their. It's not culturally woven in. I don't think so. Football, you have a few. Um Remember we had that whole room full of baseball players? It was the day the walleye scandal broke. We played trivia with all those guys? Yeah, a whole shit. Yeah, but I didn't know a team could have like 80 b- pitchers. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a room full of like a dozen dudes. I was like, are you sure you guys all pitch for the <laughs> <laughs> same team? <laughs> Steve, That's... I don't think I can name a single hockey player that like professional NHL player that pl- like hunts. Oh, uh, hmm. I don't know why. A lot What's of times I have uh, strong feelings about Red, things Red about Daniels not being right, brother. Oh, Mike Fisher. Yeah, yeah, that's one. What do you think's the hunt in this pro sport? Baseball, uh, yeah, baseball ba- or football? For baseball's sure. Baseball's good. Well, yeah. it wouldn't be football because you got to play football. Well, baseball, mm-hmm. you might get done in time. No, hockey. The NHL hockey season starts in October and goes till June. So they can't do they can't do the rut or spring turkey. No, neither of them. But a baseball person can hunt. Yeah, if they're no good. Mm-hmm. What about a kicker? You always see those. <laughs> <words about it. laughs> yeah, kickers just want to golf. Kickers are notorious for they, golfing. They, they like are to golf? amazing golfers. Yes, because during practice and during training camp, kickers have one job: it's to kick. So they are, they they don't have to be in certain meetings. They got to be in team meetings and whatnot. But they don't have to be. It's a specialty. So while we practice for two hours, they might be called up for two periods in which you're kicking for, you know, three minutes here and five minutes there, whatever it may be. So they got so, a gravy job. Yes and no. I, I, you know, I'm actually really good friends with our former um, Packers kicker, Mason Crosby, but it's, you don't need to be at the peak physical fitness, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you're the first one they want to blame when you miss the game winning kick, when there's a million other plays throughout the game that could have affected the game one way or the other. Like so, a lot of people could have made a point, but when he make, doesn't make a point, it's, he just I, Yeah, it's probably one of the most stress filled <laughs> oh, jobs, pressure, especially not for imagine. the kicker who might be able to see past that unless he's got a case of the yips, but, you know, family members watch. And at least sure. with me, you know, I get an opportunity or, or used to, you know, 50, 60, 70 plays a game. You slip and fall, no big deal. You miss a tackle, you'll get them next play. You miss a kick, and you're not getting them the next play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're going to hear about it. The only thing they do to you uh, is, you know, you talked about how you never had a sack display. You never had oh, a, a celebration. Sign- you never had a oh, signature. I, I, I had one for a little while, yeah. You had a signature? Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. What was your signature? Can you get up and Let's do it for it. us? I. It's been a while. I might throw something out. But no, I. so my, my first year... Um, I I would point at my watch and like let everyone know what time it was. And it was like that was that was my little thing. And it was game cool. Time. And it, yeah, just letting people know. Yeah, game time, right? <laughs> and um, but my next year, my brother's like, hey, you're gonna I got hurt in training camp and um I didn't come back until week one. So naturally I didn't have time to, you know, perfect your celebration. Everybody's got a celebration. And <laughs> and so for my brother goes, Hey, my older brother goes, You need to do something cool. Why don't you remember that uh that scene in Predator when Arnold faces off with Predator? And, and a predator kind of outstretches his arms like this, and he flexes at uh, oh yeah at I Arnold. Like, you need to do that. And so <laughs> I I got a sack on the first third down of the game, and in my head I'm like, you know, like arms going trying out. to remember how to do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I it was the worst one. My hands were still clenched. And it looked like I was like sumo squatting with. But then I I, I kind of perfected a little bit, and then I got it out there. This is what I was doing. So that was my thing for a oh, while. Oh, dude, I remember that. Yeah. And then, then <laughs> you know, after after so many years and and so many sacks, oh, you just kind of like. 
like, all right. You just kind of just you you do your thing. But yeah, everybody's yeah. There's a there's a, yeah. It was it was oh, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They took the background. Oh, out. see, so. I thought when we were when we were hunting ducks this morning, I kind of got a sense that you were a little bit eye rolly about the celebration. No, no. Well, no. We were we were talking about somebody's family. You know, they they just come from a different era where you know the celebrate. It was all about the team. But nowadays, it's like everybody. You score a touchdown. You get a sack. You it's make a you. tackle. Yeah, it's all about you. You sell yourself. You're building the brand. So. It's you, yeah. Well, you know, the old heads and, and, you know, exactly. The old heads, they, they, it's more about the team. But nowadays, you know, you're just, they're trying to sell, sell jerseys, sell, you know, mm-hmm. fans, yeah, sell I, out venues. I remember Joe Paterno used to say, act like you've been there before. Mm, yeah. I, well, you know, a, well, like, a well-rehearsed nice celebration course. would convey to me that they're yeah. quite, that they're quite <laughs> well, accustomed yeah, to He's very proficient. He used to say that all the time, but that just meant like, score your touchdown Move time, on. Times are changing over, too. Who's yeah, the guy yeah, over sure. from your state that got in all that trouble? Wasn't that him from Pennsylvania? That, that was what, yeah, Joe from Paterno. Paterno? That yeah. was yeah, Joe San, Sandusky. Yeah, and yeah well, Paterno. Sandusky brought him down with him, didn't he? Yeah. And here you are quoting him. Well, I was <laughs> yeah, start celebrating. Care to share like a Stalin <laughs> that's, quote? With that's, us? What, that's what. <laughs> Act like you've been there before. I don't think I have any Stalin quotes. No. Uh, when you're on a team, how many like? How many of like how many of the people do you like a lot? Like you just mentioned you're good friends with the kicker. Sure. How many, like, if you had to imagine that here's the whole lineup, there's gotta be some you can't stand. Right? Sure. Some you're like, whatever, don't really talk to them much. Yeah. Some are really good friends. Like, what's that split look like? Well, you know, I, I think the first thing is, and not to get politically correct, but you're working towards a common goal. So you get along with everybody and you you you're accountable to one another. But that being said, what's great about the locker room is you can have a guy who grew up in the suburbs of LA hanging out with somebody from Miami, Florida, um, somebody from Maine up to Oregon, you know, working towards a common goal. So it brings people together that you'd never have an opportunity or you would never think that you would get along with. So I'll preface all that by saying that, but no, that was diplomatic. Yeah. And I get it because it's true though. Yeah. Cause the rivalries, the rivalries, can't but some of my be best friends field. to this day i mean are guys where you i would get together with them and it would you know we'd look like one of these hollywood movies of the two cops you know you got the white guy and the black guy and, and, yeah. and that's that's how it'd be but um you're closest with your position group you spend the most time for me it was a linebacker so there was a group of maybe seven or eight of us in a, in a in a room and that's you know we spend all our time together and then you break out to go to for defense to defensive meetings. So you got half the team there. And then when you have a team meeting, so you don't spend a whole, a great deal of time with the offense for me personally, um, forging those relationships. But I do have some of my best relationship with the offensive linemen who I went against and, and played against, excuse me, the most. But um, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, th- th- there's guys that you really click with, but they're generally going to be in your position group, and then it kind of it yeah. furthers itself out based on how much you're together with them. Because from the time you get there, everything's structured. You show up at this time, you have special teams meetings, then it goes to team meeting, then you go to defensive meeting, then you go to, you know, you break out for walkthrough, then you have workout. It, it's So you're structured in who you're with. So you just hope that you're with a good group of guys. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there was that one guy, though, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's there's never that one guy because they don't last long. You yeah, know, you, yeah, you gotta you kind of sure. gotta buy in. What was the if you think back that you grew up without the exposure to the outdoors, and now you're, you know, you're in a position where you can start doing some hunting and have been taking advantage of that situation. Can you? What was your first awareness that this was a thing people did? Probably when I got out to to. Green Bay. I remember when I got drafted, I was, uh, you know, I had to, <laughs> I was still using Wikipedia to find out where Wisconsin was on the map. <laughs> like, oh, Green Bay, I know there's so much history, but I had to look it up. I had, I had no yeah, idea where I was going, yeah. but I remember. Because you were what age? Well, I was, uh, I was 22, but yeah. um, you just, you're from the West Coast, you know, like the East sure, Coast, South, but you don't study the Midwest. And so, at least I didn't. And, no, that's pretty you know, I, yeah, yeah. And so, um, that, I remember. That's not, that's not crazy that like, I grew up in Michigan. If you would have told me um, if you just said, "Oh, uh, Salt Lake City," right? I've been like, "Yeah, Utah," but how that fits into the broader, like, what touches that? Sure. You know, at yeah. that age. But we, we, when I was flying in, it was, you know, everything was green. I, I flew in in you know spring, and, mm-hmm. and and it was beautiful. But then once I got there, 
Um, I mean, I can't name an exact time or, or place, but just being around the culture more than anything of hunting, fishing, outdoor, I think just kind of helped bring that out. And because I was there, you know, for so long, for 10 years, I think you just kind of immerse yourself in that culture and you assimilate. And there were just opportunities to go whitetail hunting, to go turkey hunting where people are like, hey, you know, come along, come, you know. And so I, I picked it up and had a blast doing it. Everybody walking around with a bag of jerky uh, snack sticks in their back pocket. Oh, you got to go to a tailgate at Lambo. I mean, that's there's 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 beer, cheese, and brats. So that you can't go great. wrong with that. I thought you were gonna throw uh, mosquitoes in there at some point. So mosquitoes, like, yeah, mosquitoes. Wisconsin, are there bad? Are there bad mosquitoes up there? I guess I didn't go far enough oh, north. Okay. Not, when not in the parking lot. Not when it's no, that not in the cold. parking lot. Yeah, not, yeah, not in the fall. Well, July. Yeah, no, I'm just yeah. July's not too bad for, I mean, where we were, I, I'm sure if maybe up in the Northwoods or it could get pretty yeah. bad, but where we are, you know, when you, like they tell you to make that hand of, of where, you know, Green yeah. Bay is, I guess. No, they don't do that hand for Wisconsin, do they? <laughs> yeah. Like the, you, you hold it up like that. Territorial over there. No, hand. that's Michigan, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. But they got maybe Door thinking, County. Like, yeah, Door County's right there. Whoosh, Wisconsinites the will bay. throw the hand? Yeah. We just mm -hmm. call that Miss Michigan. Yeah. They'll throw the hand? <laughs> yeah, they'll throw the hand. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but uh, wow. Do you want to explain that, Steve? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Just edit that out. Kids podcast. This is why, we're, yeah. this is why we're having a kid show. <laughs> Was there much of a rivalry between just growing up in Michigan? Like, even outside of football, if you're not the biggest sports fan, just like I Michigan versus... Or Wisconsin versus, you know, Illinois or... Here's the deal, though. My mom was from Illinois. And she remained. My dad didn't know anything about sports at all. Uh, my mom was a big sports fan. She had been raised in Illinois and what was, when she was a kid, like farm country, which mm -hmm. became a big Chicago suburb, Naperville. But she remained so dedicated to the Chicago teams. She liked the Cubs, the White Sox, and we all, like, she was religious about the Bears. Right, yeah. Okay? She would be out there. There was a, I still, I don't, some weird way i remember this there was a radio there was a radio station there's a talk radio station in chicago wgn and my mom actually had an antenna and would always be messing with this antenna on the roof it was the antennas on the roof she wouldn't be on the roof messing with my dad would be or whatever but she would just listen to wgn and would sit and listen to baseball games and would sit and listen to football games on the radio it's a great rivalry. I mean, I think it's so. I'm not aware of who she viewed the rivals to be, but I know that um, one of the highlights of her life. She's still alive. One of the highlights of her life was whatever the hell it was, 1984 or something, and the Bears, you know, trounced the Patriots. Oh yeah, yeah. I think was it the '85 Bears 85. when they yeah '85 Bears. Yeah, they were rolling. Like Jim that. McMahon, yeah. uh, Fridge. Fridge Perry. Oh yeah, they were rolling. Mike Slingle, the Super Bowl Shuffle. Yeah, the mm -hmm. album they had. My mom had that album. <laughs> nice but well, that was my that was my exposure as a kid like yeah. that's what i knew about football was i knew about my mom listening and watching you know following the chicago mm -hmm. teams because she just felt i don't know she, that part of her never went away even though they lived in michigan yeah well growing up in la you just don't have rivalries like that and moving out there and just it's it's a big deal of where you're from who you root for and mm -hmm. and you know how much it means to them not just the team but the whole state the city that you get that win, whether it's the Bears, like you had mentioned, White Sox, Cubs, or Brewers, Packers, Bucks. I mean, it's it's big out there. You know, here uh, it's a little bit funny because uh, you guys could be able to tell me better than me, but there's no team, okay, no professional team, mm -hmm. and then you go up one state south, Wyoming. There's no professional team. I feel like it's just a grab bag. There's no like. There's no sort of. Com there's no. Uh, I was living in Seattle when 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 uh, the Seahawks. I don't know whatever the hell. Six How seven years ago, ago okay. six oh, seven yeah. years ago, the yeah. Seahawks won yeah, the Super they were Bowl. Rolling. Dude, I, I remember I went to run an errand during that Super Bowl game. I'm not I'm not kidding when I say this. I was going through downtown Ghost Town Seattle running an errand. I was up on I went through Capitol Hill. There were no I'm not kidding you. There were no cars yeah. on the road and you're like what's going on today and it was but there's nothing like that here well, you know some guys like oh i like this team that team but you know wgn 
Yeah. Obviously, right? So that's one of the only stations that we had in Montana before cable and all that stuff. When you had WGN? We had WGN. So we they had would that broadcast. Washington State growing up, too. Yeah, I watched a lot of Cubs games. <laughs> are, so, are you serious? So they would broadcast yeah. the Cubs and uh, the Braves. Mm. Uh, and so consequently, there were a lot of Cubs and Braves fans in Montana because mm. of WGN. And then um, you would get, yeah, you're right. For like pro football, it'd be kind of like a grab bag. Uh, so there were like consequently like some Falcons fans once that mm -hmm. happened because people were already Braves fans, but, uh, lots of stories are like, oh, my kids liked the Bengals. I grew up with some kids in Missoula who are just like diehard Bengals fans. Cause of why? What? Who knows? Uh -uh, One yeah. of the brothers was like into him as a kid. And so the whole family just became Bengals fans. Suffering. Uh, yeah. There like I said, suffering. Suffering. But there are yeah. a lot, there are a lot of Packers fans. Oh, yeah. And that bar that I bartended in uh, at uh, Reds in Missoula, there was always a big contingent of Packers fans that would come down and watch those games. The, the guys I hunt with in Wisconsin, uh, this guy I told you about, Pat Dirk, mm -hmm. and he's got a big Packers sticker on his truck. You know, yeah. He's got stickers on his truck of different famous bucks that have been killed, like the silhouette of the <laughs> famous bucks that have been killed. Yeah. His topper is like made out of plywood on his truck. Really? And then he's got Packers stickers, big Packers fan. But they, those guys used to joke that when the Packers were playing, you could hunt anywhere you want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it. Yeah. it was your one chance to go hunt the neighbor's yeah. place and yeah. just well. know you were no way, no how going to get caught. <laughs> Clay, do you, do you think some of that culture that you were there, like, stuck with you? Because I, there's, I can go and see this say, hey, I'm Chester from Wisconsin. If it's another perfect person from wisconsin it's like immediate like you know connection do you think any of that that culture stuck with you and do you do you have a you have a place back in wisconsin still oh no, no i sold that so fast you kidding me i got that no, <laughs> no. <laughs> i was gonna say there's only one right answer here. Yeah. Like, no, like, no I, I will say though that when i meet people from with or you know when i meet people from wisconsin or happen to hear them it's a great kind of segue into that if you know they're not a packers fan or whatnot where where they lived in the state um there is that little bit of connection even from my 10 years there you know it's like you're an honorary wisconsinite just because you spent yeah. time up there it just right. seems at least i don't know how i mean obviously you know growing up in la there weren't people from wisconsin out there but um can you or, tell chester's from wisconsin <laughs> <laughs> say, say say you betcha and uh yeah, yeah. although it, oh you betcha yeah <laughs> they got to all oh, the, the 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 women out there the older women in wisconsin oh, yeah. have the thickest the accents thickest. Yeah. Oh, you should, you should and a very Chet's particular mom. haircut too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah people are like where, where is she from <laughs> like not from you know the u.s yeah. they think she's from somewhere what foreign else. country is she yeah. from wisconsin <laughs> oh, but, yeah, what's it like to become uh you know, we keep goofing about Wisconsin and all that. I mean, do you ever, does it ever, do, do you get tired of the whole thing? Like, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I played for the Packers, but do I need to be like Wisconsin's, you know, <laughs> no, spokesman? I, I, I think, well, I, I think it's more so, um, no, I don't get, I don't get tired of it. In fact, the more I'm removed from Wisconsin, and the Packers, just like anything, the more you come to appreciate it. My wife and Is I. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I were reminiscing, um, you know, because when most guys, get drafted or move to Wisconsin. Like, oh gosh, there's nothing to do out there. And then what? You know, what well, I'm talking oh, about 20, I'm talking there's about been... 22 year old yeah. football players, you know, or 21 rabbits. year old. <laughs> yeah. They want to hunt hey, these athletes want to hunt something else. All right. Well <laughs> yeah. but we, we were reminiscing over just uh, you know, because we have a young family, you know, the parks and where we lived and the neighborhoods and how well we were treated out there. And I think um yeah, my our time up there was fantastic. I really enjoy it, and there's certain aspects that I miss. Um, I was able to get back this past year to do some uh, walleye and king salmon fishing up on Lake Michigan, and mm. what was back at Lambeau for two of my teammates were putting the Packers Hall of Fame, and and now my kids are such big Packers fans too. So the human element of when they tell you they don't want you anymore, where you're like these sons of you know, you're, <laughs> you, you, you come full circle and you grow up a little bit, and you're like, yeah, all right, okay, all right, go pack. So you spent you spent ten years there, <laughs> ten years, and yeah. then finished your career a year in L.A. for the Rams. Yes, what was that like? L.A. was fun. It was a lot of fun for me personally. Was it weird um, being back home? No, no, it was great. It, it it almost made the season go by even faster because I was training, and what and I was just so lucky that the Rams facilities were all of 
20 minutes from where I grew up out there. So my parents, my family were able to come to every game, uh, practice. The weather's a lot warmer than it is in Wisconsin. Um, physical therapy, uh, massage therapist, the gym in which I trained at was all right there. So everything was already how I spent my off seasons. Now I was just there year round. So it was, it was real fun. In fact, I thought I was going to do that, uh, for much longer, but you know, they had other plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when we were duck hunting this morning, I was asking you about what the, you were talking about getting your jaw broke mm -hmm. and they wired your jaw shut. Yeah. And it was an interesting detail. I never thought of you were telling me that they give you a wire cutter. Yeah. <laughs> in case you got to puke or something. Yeah. Yeah. They, you need to like be ready to get your mouth back open. Yeah. <laughs> but I was asking you, what's the relationship between when you injure someone bad, someone injures you, is there any sense of obligation to like acknowledge that? And you're saying this is not part of the nah, culture. It's not part of the culture. Now, I, I think if, if it was accident, well, they're always accidental. I mean, very rarely are there, you know, malicious hits or something. Yeah, intentional. But I think if you were to to tear somebody's knee up or or uh, a season ender, you might reach out and um, you know offer your condolences to them. But I just feel like it's not in the culture. I mean, I got absolutely blindsided up in Philly. Guy peeled back on me, lit me up, landed on my labrum. I, I tore it up. I still deal with problems. I haven't heard from him, and I don't expect him to. It's part of the game, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, but you know, on the flip side of that, I can't. How many guys? I broke a. There was a quarterback who I. He, I broke his arm um, just with my helmet. I went to hit him. Actually, for, I think he was playing for the Bears. Uh, you can't remember the guy's name. Hoyer. Bri oh. uh, Brian Hoyer. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't no, send him flowers. <laughs> no, but it's just. You, you, you probably just, should. It's kind of. Well, the, I, was him, I, was I him, ran into him. I, shot, him, if I, I shot him Max in the, in the foot hunting. Okay. Well, <laughs> it was I would an accident. Like, I would say it's, it's an accident, part of the yeah. game. I'd be. I'd be doing everything I could for him. I feel like it's a little different, but I'll go <laughs> yes. along with it and just say it's kind of that next man up. Like you're on a, you, you feel bad. There's the human element yeah. of that. You're like, oh man, like you put yourself in that position. It's the, you know, why me? But I mean, you can't, you're on to the next play. You know, mm -hmm. you're on to the next game. You can't focus on that. It's a very cold business. Maybe just um, have some, just sign one of those uh, posters of you doing that. And, yeah, I'm and sure he would love that. And yeah. send him yeah. that yeah. and say, thinking of you. <laughs> Sorry I ruined your season. Or, or say, yeah. gotcha. Well, who, you remember, uh, was it, was it, who was it? Not Namath. Who, who got the compound fracture on national TV? Oh, uh, Theismann. Theismann, yeah. Theismann Joe. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, there's the dude, so I don't remember who did it. It'd be easy to find out. There's some dude out there that is saying... What's Man, that? I gave that, that dude a compound. LT. Yeah. It was LT. LT. It was Lawrence oh. Taylor. No, mm -hmm. I, I think. He's not like, man, I gave that guy a compound fracture. That guy's got more. He can pick any. He's the best, arguably the best defensive player who I've ever played the game. So I'm he, sure he's, he's got a long he's list. He's got <laughs> yeah. better accolades yeah. than, you know, I broke this guy's leg. <laughs> but I, that messes you up, though. When you see a compound fracture or, yeah. or something pointing the other, it's one thing when a guy blows out his knee, it just, but, but you don't really see it. You see the guy down, but when a, you know, a guy lifts his leg up and it's pointing this. Oh, you know, it's like the yeah. it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, the De uh, the Demar Hamlin. Are you familiar what happened to the uh, Demar Hamlin on the Bills? I think this was was his last year, yeah, two years ago. The Bengals. He. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, and so I mean, we'll that remind just, people because I'm, I'm not, I, I remember well, I, this, but I, for, you when you were going to say that, I thought you were going to say the guy that the hockey player. Oh, which I'll talk yeah, about in a second. yeah, but um, yeah, De Demar went to make a routine tackle, and you guys have to fill me on what it was called, but. Um, I guess he took such a sh uh, yeah. shock to the chest mm -hmm. that it gave him a yeah, heart attack. Yeah, he gave him a heart attack, and he just he fell down on the field. They had to do um, uh, chest, you know, I, it's not CPR, but um, the chest, yeah, compressions, compressions yeah. and everything on the field. And you're just watching it at home, like just we just watched somebody die on the field, and I guess he did die for you know all mm -hmm. intents and purposes. And so they called the rest of that game off. They're like, we're done. It just, it messes with you and, and we're, I'm going off on a tangent yeah. here, but to let you know that the, you know, it is bigger than, than sports, but yeah, with, with certain injuries, it's almost like you're, you know, you're on to the next one, but with others, you're just like, that's, that's, that's it. You know, that American hockey player that recently was killed and he's on a European league. Yeah. Adam Johnson. Yeah. Caught a Minnesota skate, guy. caught a skate, cut his juggler. Yeah. Which is insane. Oh this yeah. Not too well, long ago, right? my daughter plays hockey. Yeah. Back in November. Yeah. A couple months ago. My daughter plays hockey. A couple days after that, dude, I'm not kidding you. Every girl. Net guards. Well, it's actually, she's on co-ed as boys and girls. All net guards. Mm -hmm. And on top of my daughter's all scared of someone cutting her throat with a skate. And I'm like, Rosie, you got to appreciate, man, how many people are playing hockey for how long. And they can point to one guy. Like, you're not going to all of a sudden go out there and get, 
And I'm also trying to explain to her, these people are 250 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think there's only been like two You're not or 100 three, pounds. <laughs> there's only been like two or three deaths ever in hockey with a skate getting... So there, the there's that's, more that's than more one. Than I thought. Yeah, I was trying to. Yeah. I was telling her I, I know there's a goalie. that was the only one. No, I know there's a goalie and there was like one other. Yeah, she's nervous. about I mean, it, how right? much are we gonna whine about this? There's been two or three fatalities max. Come on. But we enjoy watching at home with our beaters and yeah. 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 Oh, that was harrowing, no yeah. man. Just this is one of those freak. I heard about a guy like a, my my neighbor's friend. He um, uh, apparently this guy broke a ski pole. And ran that broken end of the ski pole right up into the joint of his leg and groin, severed his artery, and the guy was dead in seconds. Mm. Ooh. Jeez. On the snow. Uh, 30-something years old, man. Jeez. Makes, you, makes the inside of your leg hurt. Mm-hmm. Clay and I had a great conversation when I was dropping him off at, at the uh, hotel. We got to get into it's a land management, but Please. more more so than that. Well, uh, I, I do want to get into his land management. Go ahead. Uh it, you know, because you're a fly around the, the field kind of meat stick head thumper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your words, not mine. I'm pretty sure you said that today at some point. Might have, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it came very naturally to you. Know. <laughs> no, but uh, we were talking about uh, soil ecology, soil health, mm. and uh, uh, just some of what you're getting into and like exploring the American chestnut. How's yeah. that for a turn of sure, like conversation, yeah. right? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, we kind of put the, we, when I was done playing, we were building a house in California, moved out there where your typical, you know, COVID family, we reassessed and we moved outside of Nashville now. And we were lucky because, uh, we pretty much purchased 200 acres and it's got farmland. It's got year round running water, a four acre spring fed pond, um, hardwoods backs up to the Natchez trace. I know we were talking about that Mm -hmm. earlier. But um, you'll find, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you'll find mention of the Natchez Trace in Long Hunters. Available Meteors now. American history, available now, 1761 to 1775. And uh, I already pitched him on that, too. Good, I told good, good, that. good. Well, I just, I, you know, I find myself, as soon as the kids are dropped off at school, I just go down there and I, I, I mean, there's, there's, I can get into anything. You know, you just whether see what's going on. Yeah. Whether it's just splitting wood or clearing brush. Recently had the pond dredge just because I know we had talked about this. The oxygen levels muck. were low. Yeah, too much muck. So now that's filling back up. And hey, get, when they drained it out, was anything surprising in there? Uh, there? No, there wasn't. I was fully expecting to find like some Civil War era relics, oh, no, dead I meant, like, bodies. I meant like yeah. giant fish. <laughs> oh, no. You know, it was kind of, it, was, it wasn't very satisfying because I just assumed there would be a pool of fish at the end that you could, you know, fish and get them out. But they, <laughs> unfortunately, they slowly died because this was middle of summer. The water was too hot. And, and so they just piled up on the shore. And the, But no, like, oh my God, that was in here? No, but we had caught in some big some big bass out of there, but nothing. There was a propane tank in there. Uh, <laughs> one of the many there. reasons why I, you know, wanted it dredged to know what was going on. But um, I started looking at, at trees to plant out there, you know, fruit trees and whatnot. And, and I, I think it was a, an Instagram ad was, you know, plant chestnut trees. It's, it's, it's the, you know, it's what deer prefer over, you know, every other. So I went down the rabbit hole in that. And then I started researching the history of, of the American chestnut and how it was the tree of the Appalachias. And I, I think they're, they're functionally instinct now because blight came over, wiped them all out. Mm-hmm. It was a main source of wood for, um, everyone in that area the chestnuts were great for wildlife you sell them at market and very recently they've been able to reintroduce them because they've been breeding yep. them with the chinese chestnut i forgot which is, we had a dude we had a guy on about gmos mm-hmm. and um at the end he he works with them and understands gmos and the risks and perceived risks and everything and I remember at the end of the conversation, I said to him, so let's say you fell off a tall building and you were falling and you had to tell the world to pursue GMOs or not. Would you say yes or no? And he said, as I was falling, I'd go, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but he told the story of, he says, if you're going to hack on GMOs, hear me out on the American chestnut. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, he told, yeah, they're coming back. In fact, a lot of people who I kind of run in the, the same circle with have started, you know, 
doing their own research on it, not only for wildlife and food plots, but just for the history of it. Yeah, as they well. changed like so, a gene in it, and now it's yeah. resistant to the blight. Yeah. So I planted 120, 119. Oh, yeah. Were they took. expensive? Uh, no, but the, the ones I found weren't. I found them like I, I dug deep. I had to drive down to, uh, but not like a hundred bucks a piece. No, 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 okay, no. They weren't yeah. that. But um, yeah, I, I had one. I think they were about three years old. They were about anywhere from six to eight feet. Mm. Um, but I had one chestnut burr. Um, on all the trees last year, I was so pumped to see it like open up and possibly oh, right? have these uh, you know, these chestnuts. It was I went back, it was gone. Like I think some of the wildlife had already gotten to it, but I didn't get a chance. So hopefully this next year. Now that they've had a chance to, you know, kind of set their roots and whatnot, start That's getting some cool, production. Man. Yeah. So just, did you plant them in rows like or try to plant them like a natural oh, stand? I'm, I'm so OCD. I was you out there. You them out? I was out there. I bought all these stakes. I bought uh, this mason string that had the stretch. Uh, <laughs> I drive to the front of my property on my range. I would look up. And so when you pull in, you know, you'll see it and they're, they're offset. <laughs> they're every, 30 feet from one another and they're offset every 15. So no matter where you go, it's like an optical illusion. They all line up perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. so, so sad. I feel, I, wow. I feel real good. And then I put all these, which took like another six weeks, I put all these tree tubes on them as well. My fingers are so, they're, they're, they're these white tree tubes. They're about five feet tall. Yeah, I know, I know. yeah to push yeah, the, never put one on. To I'm push the growth up, but the, the zip ties, the zip ties and having to do that. I was so thankful I was done. And now, of course, it's been a year and I'm like, all right. I'm going to plant another hundred this year, or maybe I'm going to move on to pears or, or a different type of fruit. So and, you've been digging that kind of stuff. Huh? Well, I, I, do you know anything yeah. about biochar? Ooh. No. Hit him with that. Well, I just I just started learning about that as well because um I guess they've been doing you 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 gotta fill me in this well. They've been doing this in the Amazon for ages. This uh preta uh, I'm butchering it, however you pronounce it. It's called black earth down there. But anyways, biochar is when you um you burn organic matter through pyrolysis in the absence of oxygen. Mm. So you have with charcoal, yep. and by itself you put it in the soil, it'll it'll actually you know, take the nutrients out, but you inoculate it with, you know, whatever it may be, whether you, a lot of people will put it in their, their compost pile, their manure pile. But this that I bought was inoculated with humate. And so now I just need to put it down and it just helps, it helps the soil biology, the microorganisms in the soil. Mm -hmm. So that type of stuff, which, you know, coming from pro sports, football to, to wanting to know about like juice in the soil is nothing, <laughs> you know, like the, the MPA, you know, all that in the soil. Right, so it's not like I'm, you were hanging out with the landscaping crew, right? No, no, I, I wasn't doing any of that. So that, that's, you know, I was chopping wood one time when my mom called, she's like, well, what? you grew up in the city. Like what, like, you're from, like what happened? And I'm like, just prep. And I just, I'd watch where the world ends on Netflix. I'm over there, Kevin Bacon, you know, chopping That's my right. wood and whatnot. So I don't know where it came from, but I'm having a blast doing That's it awesome. and learning. Yeah. You got to connect with, uh, our buddy Doug. So yeah, the, the humus is a big, is big buzzword in the, uh, land management mm -hmm. world right now. Cause, uh, they're, if, by just kind of reconstructing that soil biome, uh, you can uh, all of a sudden grow uh, things in soil that that people didn't think were were possible before. So humus is yeah. is just like super decomposed. It's like the ultra um, end result of a really good compost pile. Sure. Yeah. No, yeah. I'd love to. Uh, explain your plan with your the land you bought. Well, we're gonna live out there. Um, but we like the idea of just just being more independent, more self reliant, and less you know dependent on on the supply chain. So, my wife, um, she's not a prepper, but she she loves the idea of having this homestead. You know, growing our own fruit and vegetables, having our own cattle and livestock and, and chickens and and whatnot. Year round running water, as I discussed, just you know having that that fallback fail safe if you know. If it hits the fan, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then on top of that, the opportunities that affords the children, I've got three young children that, um, I mean, they, they, they have so much fun when they're there. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it. yeah, it's just getting them off their iPads and, and just getting them outdoors. They absolutely love it. It could just be, you know, I bring my kids there and they're on their iPad. No, no, we don't want to go. And then they don't want to leave because yeah. they're just messing around building a dam in, in the Creek or they're collecting you know the acorns or black walnuts whatever it is there's they just have so much fun so i think it's the opportunities and yeah really the opportunities it provides us as a family you it's really just, oh sorry, sorry no it's just interesting that you're in in tennessee because i mean it's literal 40 acres and a mule 
country where it's like every 40 acres has a spring. Mm. You know, it's, it's, you can't, what you can do with 40 acres in Tennessee versus what you can do with 40 acres in the vast majority of Montana is so insanely different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like your ability to actually you put make like, a uh, living. You put a cow on there, it's going to destroy it. <laughs> yeah. And don't, you probably don't want to drink the water because it's so alkali. Yeah. You know, it's like, but over there it's, yeah, it, it's wild. That, um, so where are you, where are you at in the, in the con? Have you guys started growing food yet? We, um, we have not started. I, I, most of the gardening I do is in our own backyard. We've got some raised garden beds and I've, I've, done everything from beets, carrots, tomatoes, pumpkins, watermelons, uh, herbs. I mean, I've done peppers. I've done quite a bit of peppers. In fact, I even grew those Carolina Reaper peppers. And <laughs> oh, you did? That was a nightmare. They, 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 they grew, I mean, they, they were fantastic, but, um, I put like a sliver in some, one of my eggs and then my stomach was hurting for the next couple hours. It is that I forget what it's the. So what, it was as hot as you thought it would it's be. It's as hot as advertised. <laughs> yeah. But naturally, I'm like, I'm going to grow up the Carolina Reaper. Got them to grow and everything. But um, as far as the land's concerned, um, we just did some no till drilling for some clover back there for a uh, food plot for deer. But um, we're getting ready to pour the foundation for our barn out there. That'll be kind of like the central hangout. Planning on having a prep kitchen like, you know, what we, yeah, where we were yeah. at today. And, you know, having to hang out while we build the house just to get down there a little bit more. Cause right now there's, there's nothing there. There's no electricity. The kids, you know, after those two or three hours are ready to go home. There's no, you know, home yeah. base, so to speak. Walk in refrigerator. We can, we can really give you the ideas for what you need out there. <laughs> we already have a little four by six walk in refrigerator. Yeah. I've, we've already got it mapped up. We got a good team working on it, but now we gotta, we gotta have an even better team, bring the cost down because good grief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were your impressions of hunting ducks this morning? Because you never hunted ducks. No, I, it, it was a blast. Turkeys, though. Turkeys. You hunted turkeys. 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 Turkeys is a lot of fun. But as far as ducks, that that was that was a lot of fun. People had told me for the longest time that elk hunting and duck hunting are, are two of the best hmm. hunts. And I'm going to tell you that turkeys are one of the best. Hunts. Well, tur- yeah. turkey is a Same. lot of fun. I think anything that and it, this doesn't go in line with duck, but anything you can kind of hear and you can call in. And I, I I can't really call, but you hear them getting closer and you know something's out there. So it's it it kind of gets you going, but the ducks was great because, you know, you set up these decoys, you, you know, you guys calling them in and, and you have an opportunity at least where we were at today. Um, every so often different varieties and, and then obviously kind of, you know, test yourself with the shots that you got to place on them. So yeah, different it was, shot scenarios. Yeah, it's it was not it was, always the same yeah, thing. Yeah. But I, I had a blast too. And you're going to get a couple duck stuff. Yeah. I don't think I was ever with someone, maybe I'm wrong, who, who kept the duck to get it stuffed. They've all got them, but I just don't think I've ever been with someone that got one that they were going to get stuff. Well, my wife was like, she wants a bird. Yeah, she wants she wants some birds to be. I told her I'd bring home some obviously some meat, but you know she's like, when are you going to start getting some? Because I got all these oh, heads cool. on the wall, you know. It's just and she's like, bring home some. The birds look good on the wall, yeah, you know. Yeah. So you could do a couple of cool arrangements like um, hanging up by fishing line and flying, which would be pretty cool. Yeah. I'll have to, uh, I spent enough time on Google just, images, yeah. just like you type in the type cool of birds right and, and mounts that I have. I have a little yeah. fan mounted up there. You can flip on, yeah. get everybody to line up. She might draw, <laughs> she might draw the line there. But yeah. What I wanted to ask you about too, um, you, you were talking about the debate in your head. We discussed this a little bit this morning of what's, when do you get kids involved? And you kind of got in your head, you're talking about you mm-hmm. had in your head like 10. When I was sharing with you in, in this state, 10 is the legal age. Um, yeah, yeah. Talk talk about that, or explain kind of how you've debated that in your own head about. Well, there's there's this fine line. Um, you know, these kids are so desensitized nowadays, but you want to teach them the respect. You know, they see a dead animal, you want to show them why you're doing this. Why are we? You know, how this is why we kill animals because you know we're trying to to support us and you know keep everything in balance and. I've told them as well too, because they were like, "Hey, can we go hunt this? Can we do that?" And so I just make up an ambiguous answer. It's against the law. You have to be ten years old. So that kind of <laughs> that gives me some time to get my ducks in a row. Because <laughs> you trying to plan. Yeah. Well, they asked for. We talked about. They asked for a go kart. Like, can I get this for? I mean, you're not old enough. And I was like, "Besides, you have to be ten years old before they let." <laughs> so they 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 let off it for a little bit. But I've included them as much as possible. But I just I feel like for me personally, with where my kids are at. 
um, I'm not really ready to hand them a firearm. Now you had mentioned, which I thought was great, you know, having your child on your lap when they do their first turkey. Yeah, hunt, my whatever kids it is. when they shot their. So my daughter got her first turkey at eight. Mm-hmm. My boy got his first turkey at eight. Which in their home state, they can't hunt at that age. Right. But we would go to a state that didn't have the age requirements, and they both shot their first turkeys. But I mean, literally, in my lap. Yeah. Now, how'd they yeah. do with the, you know, waiting in the blind and all that? Because I feel they like fall that asleep. Was, oh, I was just saying, that, that would be my <laughs> nightmare if they're just No, like, they fall asleep. <laughs> okay. You, man, you drag a kid out of bed like 4.30 yeah. in the morning. They're, they're that going. kid's going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but it's they, just more a matter. But, but our buddy Yanni, he's not here right now, but he's he had these funny pictures of, uh, he hunted pretty hard with his daughter this year. He's got these pictures of her sleeping in the most just like awkward positions, yeah. awkward <laughs> spots. You know like those uh, slumped over against a tree sleeping. You know? What are the the like two dudes that like blow up? You know, at yeah. car lots yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it, his this series of photos that uh, it was his daughter as that. You know, and like you cut the fan off, and it's just like <laughs> 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 that's what it looked like. Yeah. But when my, I would take them out young, sitting in my lap, because they get comfortable, you know? Yeah. They're like, you sure. know, oh, yeah. You'd realize all of a sudden, you think they're just being real good, and all of a sudden, you'd kind of hear like, <laughs> <laughs> and when they breathe real heavy like yeah. that, oh, yeah, and I just I just let them go, you know? Yeah. Wake them up, but uh, man, I, I don't know. There's different, there's different approaches people have. I hear people all the time, and it, it, I hear this so much that it must be true, that people are like reluctant to burn their kids out. They don't want to give them a bad experience. They're going to burn their kid out. You know, I don't want to blow it, right? Um, that must happen. But that's not been my experience. And of the kids that I'm, I have a lot of buddies that have kids in our kids' ages, you know, in, in the age of your my mm-hmm. kids' brackets, and, and who are push it, you know? And I haven't seen that happen yet. Yeah. I'm assuming it must happen, but it might be from a past generation too. Cause like, um, I'm just so much nicer. I'm so much, I mean, I'm kind of mean to my oldest boy, <laughs> but I'm so much nicer to my kids than like my dad was to me yeah. about hunting. Just well, ni- more considerate about their well being. Yeah. I'm know? not opposed to, you know, any age restrictions and, and kind of getting those kids out there. And, and perhaps with these people who have, you know, putting on a, it's, kind of a one and done deal like we need to kill something and if we don't they're not gonna have a good time and maybe they don't go out for another year but the fact that your kids are you know around or mine in this case like we're always going to our land and we're always out there putting out corn or whatever it may be to kind of keep them within the process oh yeah perhaps that keeps them more engaged than hey we are taking this trip you know this three-day trip we're gonna you know try and kill or hunt white tail turkey whatever it is and if you don't get it all we did was sitting up gotta have an hour it ain't gonna happen yeah. 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 yeah yeah How old are your kids again, Clay? They are eight, seven, and four. What is it, boys, girls? Boy, girl, next? boy. Yeah, we got yeah Clay the fourth. I figured I'd be like every other athlete and name him after me. So my <laughs> oldest boy is the is the fourth. Now, are you way leaning on your kids that they have to play pro football? Not at all. Not at all. They can if they want. My dad didn't do that with us at all. But I just found that at least and this is broad stroke statement that um you know most boys want to grow up and be like their fathers. And mm-hmm. I know that for me they have taken at least my youngest my my youngest is a monster uh he just you know tab we have to tackle every night before going to bed but he loves watching the youtube clips of me back in the day oh so, really hey, man, hey type that's funny like, type in your uh, clay matthews highlights i and i'm like i'm not wa- i'll end up watching it <laughs> <laughs> hey your dad was your dad was all right but I, you know if they want to grow up and do it i have no problem whatsoever i'll probably be i started playing tackle football at eight years old i don't think there's a, a reason that kids need to start that early yeah. not that i have anything against it but you know perhaps we start with flag work your way up until you're at maybe 10 years old <laughs> you know, uh you know when they can start with with uh you know tackle yeah football. it's the age at which you do serious yeah, stuff yeah you know we had bo jackson on the show years ago uh i was surprised when he told me he said i wouldn't let my kid play football I, I listen. I understand both sides. It was the. It was, I mean, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. No, it, I it wasn't the lifestyle. It was the injuries. Yeah, I understand that. But I mean, first of all, I wouldn't be the position I'm at today if it weren't for football. Just that's just you know God's honest truth. You know, the financial freedom that it provides you is unbelievable. The opportunity to meet people, to help others, to you know push your platform. Yeah, you do a lot of charitable work. I know. Yeah, yeah and I but I just think 
there's also this this other side of it, the the teamwork aspect, which I think is so important for young kids, especially coming from a sports background, is being a part of a team and not just always individual sports. You learn how to manage your expectations, win together, lose together. Um, I mean, there's so many emotions that you go through and, and, and similar to what we were talking about earlier, you're bringing people from all walks of life together for a common goal. I think it starts early and I think it helps them become better humans as they, you know, as they grow up. So for me, I think there's, it's, it's not just the, oh yeah, you can make tons of money and, and do this. I think there's so much to it than the fame and, and money that come from it. Yeah. Uh, you said you don't really, you don't miss the fame terrible. No, not really. You said it haunts some people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, the roar of the crowd, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. For me, I, I've, you know, I had, um, I kind of came onto the scene real fast. Um, in our second year, we won the Super Bowl, and I was playing very well. And so, you know, you have and, – and, you know, when you put your your self-image and your worth in the hands of the media, it's dangerous, you know, and and they'll, they'll, they'll tear you – or, I mean, they'll lift you up just to tear you down. So for mm -hmm. me, it, it's almost been a relief, you know, kind of taking a step back and focusing on everything else, whether that's, you know, being a dad, a husband, being able to go hunting, and not worrying about, you know, the criticism – or the praise that comes along with it. So for me, I, I truly have not missed it. Uh, you know, it's nice when you can get to the front of the line, certain restaurants and whatnot, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, and those paychecks that used to come in. But for the most part, for me, I, I'm, I'm good with it. But yeah, I mean, there are people who... Yeah, all that's nothing compared to some perfectly lined up chestnuts, man. Yeah, I'm telling you what. We, <laughs> we spent weeks on that, and I feel good about it. <laughs> now that'll be there for a while. That legacy right there will be there for a while. So uh, you had you had some hunts prior, like during your NFL days. Yeah. So I would try and schedule at least one hunt, um, after the season, uh, which would, you know, obviously end in January, February. And I usually, I have family in Texas. So it started with the exotic hunts, the high fence hunts in mm -hmm. Texas. And those, those were a blast. And, but I kind of grew out of that and I started to enjoy just the, the fair chase hunts. And so I've done, uh, uh, pronghorn, Whitetail. I'm just trying to think what's up on the wall. Mountain lion. Um, Where'd you hunt an antelope? Uh, Colorado. Now oh, I'm blanking cool. on where it was. I went elk hunting um, in La Vida, Colorado. Uh, did black bear in Utah this hmm. year. So yeah, then you know, white, did you get one? I didn't. No. I guess they had gotten a lot of snow this year. So when we went up there, they just they weren't. You spring, You were spring hunting. Spring hunt. Yeah. With hounds too. Oh, so yeah. there wasn't, there just wasn't a lot of movement. Year. It yeah. was, it was. Is it right that, are you cautioned because everybody's a brand kind of in the NFL? Are you cautioned to, to like what in your personal life you can, you can share when yeah. you're, when you're playing? Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's, um, for me personally, um, I mean, I know who, you know, who cuts my checks when I'm, you know, doing these endorsements and commercials on TV, not just outside of the, the football teams in which I played for, but they're usually in New York or LA and, and predominantly are, you know, either anti-hunting or, you know, yeah, anti-hunting. So for me, it's like, I just, I choose not to post that or, or, or really, you know, dive into it and talk about it unless somebody within the community, the hunting outdoor conservation space wants to, but for the most part, it, it just, it benefits me just to, kind of keep it to myself and not that I'm, you know, I wouldn't say a sellout, but the opposite of that. But I just, I also think there's, um, for me, and one of the things I really enjoy about, you know, meat eater and, and watching the show and the content you put out is it doesn't feel like it's just some overweight white male shoots animal, takes, you know, pictures smiling over them. And no, dude, I'm super skinny. Well, <laughs> and, and that's why, but, and I, and I think there's, you know, you watch animals that, you know, you would look at and historically, you know, you might look down on much. Okay. Why are we, why are you hunting this animal? You know, how does this benefit, uh, you know, the other animals, the ungulates, whatever it might be. And then you do a great job cooking it up at the end. And you also tell a great story with, with the people involved in it as well, which I think is phenomenal. And I think it's helped bring, it's helped uh, eliminate the stigma of mm. hunting animals, which is just, you're this, you know, you're the, you're blood hungry and you just want this trophy for the wall. There's so much more to it that you really can't explain to somebody, which I think you're doing a phenomenal job who has never hunted before. So, uh, and I forgot where I went off on this tangent. No, but it's good because we recently yeah. had, uh, uh, Brian Harmon who won the British Open mm -hmm. was on and 
who he, is the hunter in golf. Yeah. Possibly. And, and he butcher. said when he, in, in England, they were taking a real, the, in the interviewing, you know, <laughs> they were asking a lot of hunting questions and he thought they were interested in hunting. But it was, you know, then he was dubbed the uh, Brian <laughs> yeah. the Butcher. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and it's a shame. And he's too. like, oh, these guys are really interested in hunting. Let me tell you another thing. Yeah. <laughs> All along, not knowing that they're going to try to roast him over it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and I think you just have to, you, you just have to commit. But, um, I mean, that's, you know, that's who was paying me. And so I yeah. wanted to just kind of fit in line. But I was still able to, it's not like they said, hey, you can't hunt or you can't do this. So I still got to do everything I wanted to. I just chose not to. And I've I've always been like that. I've kind of kept an, uh, you know, an arm, uh, the public at arm's reach just because of the, uh, you know, how much access they give to um, athletes nowadays. And now, you know, to whether it be your children or whatnot, I'm like, oh, I'm good with that. Like everything you see on TV, all the commercials and stuff, that's, you know, that's, that's fodder, but everything that's at home, I try and keep that as, as private as possible. Oh, I understand. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. I had a blast. Thanks so much for thanks taking for me out and hanging with, with the boys and everything. This was, I'm glad I didn't have to hide this, you know, maybe now that I'm <laughs> on my next, uh, you know, navigating this post. No uh, one can yell at, you know. Yeah, post, yeah. I mean, they're not cutting my checks for as much anymore, so <laughs> I'll probably be asking for a job here at Media soon enough. <laughs> I don't well, like Clay, it. Clay gets stuff done, I'll tell you that, because I have to buy tags for people all the time and whatnot, and I was working with some other guys, and Clay just called me up. He's like, what do I need? And the next thing you know, he sends an email over like three minutes later. Got all of his tags. Just gets it done. That's just I, so what I, I told you, I, all right? I, Don't I, let the uh, <laughs> DNR come around. But No, but like that's that's huge. I was like, ah, this guy is not this Knows how to navigate a website. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, they're difficult. Once you get that social in there, you're good to go. But Good shooting today too, by the way. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. One more thing to end on. You were talking about which fish you should stock your pond with. So maybe oh, we yeah. should do a poll here. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no, this is great. I already because know. Don't even worry about I've it. I've gone back and forth. So, you know, now that I've, I've so when I drained What's the pond, options? when I drained the pond, I had, I had Northern what? Uh, bass. Um, there's you, two, had two, two, you had Northern pike? Nor, no. Aren't oh. there two different types of bass? There's Florida largemouth. Small, small, large, 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 small, small mouth, sorry. large mouth. Well, there's, yeah, there's a bunch different of different bass. Yeah, as far as large, as far as large mouth is concerned, there's the Florida and then there's the Northern. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have yeah, clarified yeah. that. Guadalupe. Okay. Yeah. You know, don't, we'll, don't we'll, get too we'll, in-depth. No, 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 no. You're talking. I love all the intricacies, intricacies of fish yeah. and all the differences, but uh, I've never had any exposure to anything with the large mouth. Okay. But yeah, there's like the Virginia. I don't know. I don't yeah, there's a bunch well, of different like subspecies. Yeah. Yeah. So I, there, were, there, was, there was crappie in it as well and some type of bluegill. So, Ooh, you know, I, I brought that's in. That's what I was going to say. I brought in somebody who does. Um, you know, trophy pond. So he says, okay, well, you got to stock them with Florida largemouth. So initially no, I was like, don't put no. largemouth in there. Come I on. haven't made a decision. So this is why I'm, you know, so we shouldn't have brought this up, Corey. Like, like, don't put a largemouth. Let's do the guest our fa uh, a favor right. and so, let him finish the sentence. <laughs> so, so I'd go back to these, nor I guess these Northerns are, are more aggressive, but they don't get as big, but they were, my kids were enjoying catching them. Uh. And then there's the Florida mar largemouth, which obviously, you know, can be massive. And then there's these, he wants these painted bluegill, um, which are a Florida subspecies. They get really big too, which is fine. But he said, don't put crappie in. I guess they breed earlier than the other fish, eat up all the phytoplankton. It was one of those that mm. kind of went over my head. I was like, okay. Mm. But I started, <laughs> and then I want catfish. I want catfish because my sure kids, you, you know, everybody loves catching catfish, but he goes, don't do it. Don't do it. They'll ruin the whole, you know, the chain of command, so to speak, within mm. there. And, but I, I so ultimately where I'm at is um bluegills fine. I think I'm gonna go with channel cats, but I'm curious on bass. So I'm just curious what everybody. Don't put no bass opinion. in there, man. Bass is gonna eat everything else. Don't put, put, put listen, in there. man. Yeah, but your some, kids are gonna have a lot of fun catching no. bass. All right, so I got four oh, different oh, opinions. Bluegill, bluegills, bluegill. 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 eat them too. Yeah, but the ba the bass and bluegill were in there before. Put bluegills back in. That's it. Listen, just put the bluegills <laughs> in there. This world is not gonna run out of bass. I think you can run out of bluegills. Yeah, run out of. Well, just put bluegills in there. My kids are gonna run out of patience. Oh no! Me. When your kids go down there, when your kids go down there with a little teeny popper. So that's what's cool to... is that they'll eat on the surface. Oh, they'll eat on the so surface. Oh, yeah, no, they, they've, they've fished awesome. there before and they've enjoyed it, but sometimes they get bored with. I mean, they catch because you get a bass. Like here's the problem: you're gonna get bass in there. Then it's gonna be like, oh, there's that one bass, and there's that other bass, and then you're gonna, gonna start be like naming them like bass. deer. It's gonna be like then the next thing you know, you got a koi pond. Don't put no bass in there. 
Listen, put a shitload so, of bluegills. Someone in there. who grew up on a farm that had a farm pond full of bass and bluegills is and not in a position to comment on this. <laughs> put the freaking bass in there. Yeah, well, your, I'm, go- I'm kids, going with the your bass. Your kids will thank you. I'm going with the bass. You got to do bass. Just, oh, bass, bluegill, and catfish. All right, that's what I'm doing. There you go. I was more so asking. It? Uh, it's about twelve feet at its mm. deepest. Oh, oh maybe God, some walleyes man. in. Put some gills in there, dude. I don't think walleyes would survive. <laughs> not right. deep. Probably, no, probably, probably not warm. Probably blue wouldn't. gills, man. Big old freaking blue gills. You know what? You want something big? Put those sterilized blue gills in there. I don't know. They can't make are. love. They just get big. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> give it a shot. And put some regular gills in there. I don't know enough about fish yet, so well, you'll <laughs> find out once you start raising all these different bluegills. This Florida hybrid thing sounds real interesting, though. Like if it's one of those big, they you know they call them like the shell crackers or whatever. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. They're called in, a, the, in yeah. the fresh water. There's a couple of fish that people will say this about in fresh water. They'll say pound for pound, nothing can outfight a smallmouth. Pound for pound, nothing can outfight a bluegill. A five pound bluegill is gonna out tussle. There's no such thing, but a five pound bluegill is gonna out tussle a five pound smallmouth bass. But do your kids ever get bored of just catching bluegill? Like if you had your, if you had, no, I live in the Inner Mountain West, right. dude. There's no bluegill. You All gotta right. look high and low for a bluegill. <laughs> well, Not it, that we, they have found them. If we, Jimmy was fishing a pond that had a bunch of big bucket mouse in it, he'd ask me if he could spear them. He would. He would <laughs> have. A, he would have a blast catching them. I know he would. Him and his buddies catch <clears throat> catch large mouths. Put Dink, large dinkers. Mouth. Dinkers. Okay. Not bucket mouths. This is such a Minnesota goodbye. Nope. <laughs> okay, quick show of hands. Bluegills. Yeah, bluegills. Yeah, bluegills. Yeah, bluegills. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So there's five people think the bluegills Cat, should be. Let's go, go to catfish because the bass. Catfish. Yeah. Yep. Two think catfish. Ooh. Crappies. Yeah, sure. Oh, Why not? No. Two yeah. on crappies. Yeah. Two crappies. Uh foul mouth bass. Large mouths. Large mouths? Yeah. One. I'll vote twice. Ask, ask twice. this guy if it would be possible to put uh, a bowfin in there. Bowfin. Okay. Yeah. I'll ask him. Yeah. Snakeheads. I don't think you're going to want to do that. You definitely want to do You're going to get yourself arrested. You put snakeheads in there. Well, if, I mean, bowfin would be the yeah the right one. But if, you know, part of this pond gets so hot and denuded of oxygen, that fish can live in there and it'll eat frogs and... Turtles and stuff like that, and they taste awesome. Don't don't put bovins. Okay, well, It'd I'm glad so we brought cool. this up because there's, there's actually more <laughs> uncertainty to this decision yeah, than ever before. But now we got y'all straightened out here. Uh, bluegills would be just fine. Yeah. All right, we'll start with that and work our way up. You're a researcher. You'll get you'll. Yeah, get I'll to figure it out. Yeah. Any any other questions you need solved? Do you and your wife want to know how you guys should decorate or anything? We can. Well, handle- Handle no, that right my here. My wife's got that figured out, but okay, I did. Good. I did ask you so for could, a duck we recipe. We can take a vote on that. Cal, Cal told me the, the to do duck it. recipe. Did, the, you, did you memorize capital it? Capital T. Oh yeah. You gotta. You gotta. Mm-hmm. If the if the fat, you gotta score the skin just. Oh, ever he so told you all, a little but salt also, on it. Don't ask these two because he'll give you kind of a little bit different answer than Cal. Like well, with this was a no and, crowd situation. Yeah. I gave you did it on your own. Yes, shot them straight. Yeah. yeah, so that's the right way. It's yeah. the right like, way. hey, Clay, can I, can I get a word with Room you? Room temperature <laughs> pan. This is what's going to happen when, uh, you when get it comes to the to co- Listen, you're going to hear a lot yeah. of, when it comes to cooking the duck, just hear me out here. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, room room temperature pan, skin side down, let that, that fat or whatnot render. Yep. Flip it over, medium rare, pull it off. Yeah, beauty. Simple. Got it. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it. hanging out. That was a lot of fun. Thank right, you. Thanks for joining. Where them duckies, I've been looking for a while. Goblet in the sky, how high, probably a mile. Goblet chilling in some willows or some cattails. Goblet munching on a guppy or fat snail. My favorite duck, if you had to ask, then I'd have to say a ruddy. That little blue bill and bait display make it feel like my buddy. But I don't hunt them buddies, they just do cute if I see a coot. And I just won't shoot. There's certain ducks that I like to view, and certain ducks where I go pew pew. What kind of duckies do you hunt? Mostly dabblers. I dabble with the divers, but I really like the mallards. The redheads and the pintails and the widgets and the teals. If you cook a canvas back, that's gonna make a tasty meal. Mashed potatoes with some gravy, Brussels sprouts, and my plate's good. The answer is McGanza if the question's what don't taste good. Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? 
foie gras. That's some creepy stuff. I don't like the way them French people treat them ducks. They put them in a cage and force feed them ducks. Might as well tie them up and just beat them ducks. Free them ducks, I'm speaking of. Save them wetlands, creeks and stuff. They drying up, ain't deep enough. Them ducks, they need charity from us. And abide by the regulations. I do all that for conservation. You break the rules, no conversation. You shot three scops, that's a violation. Woo! I fly and be on your ass. Stomp the wet feet on your ass. Woo! I might just preen on your ass, stop and feed on your ass. They let limit of seven ducks in the bag. One pin tail to red as two gave his packs. If you hunted for mallets, your two can be his. Two scouts, twenty Vikings, five Canadians, the fairies, five flyway. Don't shoot from the highway. Steel shot is the right way. Popping off with my twelve gauge. Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? Where them duckies at? Where them, where them duckies at? Where them duckies at? Em. I smoke them with my shot it and I smoke them with my smoker I put them in a brine, yeah I use the salt that's kosher Some garlic and brown sugar, now I got a tasty potion What kind of wood do you use? Maple wood! How them duckies taste them, boy, they taste good I eat them up and then I grab my gun Hop in the truck and then I'm out to hunt Put on my weight as I crack with my lungs These duckies are smart these duckies are hunt Where the duckies at? Where the, where the duckies at? Last week I made a duck stuffed mushroom mixed with some cream cheese. I had like a mallet, a teal, a golden eye, and a buffalo head up in that. Put some sage in it, some breadcrumbs, stuffed it in a mushroom, baked it in the oven, and I had some leftover. <laughs>